Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 1703. The topic is Q&A and the title is Setting Smart Goals for Fat Loss and Muscle Building. The SMART acronym actually refers to, well, the the word SMART refers to an acronym, (laughs) uh, for a certain way to set up goals. The S-M-A-R-T of SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time Bound. Now, we will kind of touch on those, but if you want to learn more, we do have a really old podcast about this. It's podcast 124. Golly, way back when. You can find old podcasts if you go to our website. We have a podcast player on the homepage. So www.brutalirongym.com. Underneath the website, I mean, underneath the podcast player are instructions, whether on a mobile device or a laptop, on how to find older podcasts. You can actually search podcasts via just a single term. If you just want to type in protein or, you know, bench press, anything it might be, you can actually use those instructions for that as well. I would love to put an actual searchable database on our home homepage, but uh, when I contacted website developers, that was really expensive. So uh, maybe in the future, but for right now, that was a little outside of my budget. But that is uh, available there if you follow the directions. So if you take two or three extra steps, you can actually have the database and look for what you want. But it would be nice to have that just on the home page as well. Okay, so today's topic actually came from our live monthly programming service. I was pushing that for a while, then I've kind of backed off on pushing pushing it because we got a lot of people to sign up, which was awesome. And then I just kind of wanted to see how it was going to go before I continue to push it even more. Everybody seems to be very happy. Everybody loves the programming. They love the educational aspect where you can ask any question you want. If it if it's not going well, it's just simply because the person's going through craziness in life and maybe they had to deprioritize training for a little bit. But the programming... Everybody loves it, thank goodness. Uh, And the Q&A part is really awesome as well. We're going to use today, uh, today's podcast actually came from the Q&A document that I have for the live monthly programming service. So in that service, anybody who's participating in the service can go into this document and they can ask absolutely any question they want and you will get a very in-depth, very personalized answer. I will sit there and I type it out and I try to make it look good, you know, Uh, so that way anybody who looks at it can learn from it and benefit from it. So today's topic, the person wrote, I just listened to podcast 124, Setting Smart Goals. I wanted to know when it comes to physical fitness goals in the gym based off of the workouts for me, knowing that I want to lose fat and build muscle at the same time, what kind of a goal would be good for me? It's something I can write down and track on a daily basis. So I want to read through what I wrote, and this will just be a great answer for anybody. If you have the goal of trying to build muscle tissue and lose fat, you can feel a little lost in what to track because it, it you're not purely going for weight gain or weight loss and most people are inherently just kind of we think scale first you know i track my progress on a scale well if you're trying to lose fat which makes you weigh less but you're trying to build muscle which makes you weigh more what do you do <laughs> you know should the scale move should it not move uh, how do i know if i'm making progress if the scale isn't moving so it can be challenging if The only way that we know to track progress is a weight scale. I want to go through and touch on that today and and say, okay, what can I do uh, to replace that and actually have something to track? So my reply was, glad you listened to the podcast. (laughs) So I'm very happy people listen to the podcast. And I wrote, in general, what people can track every day. And this would actually be kind of for any goal. But what you can track every day is definitely nutrition. You can track your calories, your protein, your sugar content, and your meal distribution. Those tend to be kind of the biggest ones that I, I promote with almost all my clients is we want to have the right calorie range because we talked about that a million times over that no matter what you eat, even if it's the right food or the wrong food, if your calories are incorrect for your goal, it, what you eat makes no bit of difference. You will not reach your goal. Calories are the be-all, end-all, kind of the overall thing that determines 
the kind of the direction that, that you're going to be going in. And then what you eat can determine like how you feel through the process for sure, whether you're going to have better body composition or worse body composition throughout the process. But calories set the direction. So calories, definitely. Protein, absolutely, yes. Uh, protein is how we build muscle tissue. It's how we repair muscle tissue. It's how our body does a lot of the repairs and maintenance. We absolutely need that. Sugar, we want to be low outside of training times. You might drink sugar uh, before a workout to give yourself some energy, especially if you work out in the morning. You don't want to work out fasted without any food. You want to have some calories in you. And if you're drinking something or you have to eat something, you know, 15, 20 minutes before you work out, you don't want a Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> you want something that gets in your bloodstream very quick and that would be sugar so outside of our workouts though we do want to keep sugar down very low as that helps to reduce body fat and promote more body fat usage as fuel which helps towards fat loss as a goal then meal distribution is very important we don't want to under eat all day and overeat at night your body composition will be trash uh, so that's important to look at so those are all things nutritionally we can look at you can also just track your activity level slash workouts for the, the day. You know, did you work out? Yes or no? <laughs> you can write down whether you did like a workout in the gym or your home gym, or you can write down whether you did something small, like a 10 minute walk. But those are all elements that you can track every day. And you can track your body weight every day if you want to. Uh, even if your goal is to build muscle and lose fat, you may not be expecting or even aiming to have a significant change in weight. But you can actually track your weight to see if it's staying the same or if it is trending in the direction you want. So, for example, if someone is wanting to lose body fat and just try to hold on to muscle tissue, but their main goal is to really get their body fat down, get their weight down, they might aim to lose 8 pounds a month, on average 2 pounds per week. But if the person is wanting to ensure that the calorie deficit isn't so significant that it negatively impacts muscle growth process. You want to make sure you're still fueled enough for muscle growth. Then you might only be aiming for a weight loss rate of say two or four pounds a month. Now that's going to be very tri tricky. You know, if you're, if your average of loss is half a pound per week, you're going to find out very quickly that that's very frustrating because our body weight can fluctuate quite a bit every single day. It would not be uncommon for your body weight to fluctuate half a pound per day so if you're trying to find a trend of a half a pound a week you have to look over a long period of time you might have to look at spans of eight weeks or 12 weeks to really see if the overall averaging trend is in the direction you want so it can be very very slow if you're tracking body weight only to see if you're making progress. And that's why if they want to track something every day, which I absolutely would recommend you do, it's, it's good to have all the other elements included. The calories, protein, sugar, meal distribution, workouts, yes or no. Then I wrote, you can also track learning aspects. You know, if you want to watch a video or listen to a podcast, wink, wink, <laughs> or read an article, uh, whatever it might be is if you do a learning element, you can kind of record that every day if you want. Now, especially my, my clients who are trainers. A lot of the a lot of the clients actually have their trainers are actually really experienced trainers. But if you're a beginner trainer, you can, you can tra definitely track learning because you would want to be investing a significant amount of time and effort and energy into that because you want to learn your craft as fast as you can. So I continued and said, as for the SMART acronym, an example I like when I'm aiming for both fat loss and muscle growth is to actually track my habits, not the outcomes. If my habits are consistent, the desired outcome will follow. Now, that's a huge assumption that my habits are actually in line with what produces the result I want. <laughs> but everybody in Live Monthly Programming, everybody listening to this podcast, we have the free nutrition edu education information on our website. Just go to free nutrition education. The first link on that page is how to create your own nutrition program. So you, you're going to know what to do with your nutrition. And if you're in the Live Monthly Programming, you're, you're getting sent training. So you know your training is good. So... You know what you need to know for nutrition. You know what you need to know for training. So the goals that I wrote, and these are examples for things that I actually do, by the way. Uh, so was nutritionally, my nutrition goal can be adhere to my nutritional targets, which would be calories, protein, sugars, and meal distribution. Adhere to my nutritional targets a minimum of 10 out of 14 days for the next six units of 14 days, which is roughly three months. 
So the first 14 days and the second 14 days is roughly a month. Then you have another 14 days and another 14 days. That's the second month. And then another 14 and another 14. That's the third month. The reason why I like doing 14 days is because life is just absolutely chaotic. Uh, and we go through seasons of life where it seems very consistent and times where it seems anything but consistent. When you track it in a narrower span, uh, it, it becomes very emotionally draining and you're going to have highs and lows because you might be crushing it for three days and you have a really bad fourth day and you might get down and you might quit. But if you kept going for 10 days, you might find the next five or six, you're going to be perfect. So really you would only messed up one out of 10. So it's better to look at a bigger span of time because it puts our mistakes in a bigger picture. But if we look at too big of a span of time, every individual mistake doesn't seem to be as significant. So if I said, okay, in the next 100 days, I want you to do the best you can, if you miss a day or two, you're automatically going to be like, yeah, what does it matter? You have 100 freaking days, you know? So we want enough, short enough time to create pressure on our, on our day-to-day, but not so short that it's too much pressure. <laughs> so 14 days, and there's actually a lot of science that backs that up, is 14 days is a really good uh, increment. So that might be my goal for nutrition. Adhere to my nutritional targets a minimum of 10 out of 14 days for the next six units of 14 days. So for the next three months. Okay. My training goal for the next 12 weeks, aim to achieve 10 points per week. How do I define the points? If I do an in the gym workout, that's three points. If I do what I call a something workout, that's one point. And a something workout means I just did anything above my normal daily activity for a minimum of 10 minutes. Whether it's going for a walk, bodyweight squats, and sit-ups and stuff. Just something that feels like I, I didn't need to do it, I chose to do it, so it feels like exercise. It's 10 minutes, but even if it's not traditional exercise or it's not in the gym, it still counts. So in the gym workouts are three points, something workouts are one point, and what I want to do each week, I want to add up to 10 points. Now, you could extrapolate that and say per 14 days, you know, you want to get 20 points. But the reason why I kind of set it up this way is I like a little bit more pressure in my training than I like in my nutrition. And I like, okay, for for the two weeks of nutrition, I want to aim for 10 out of 14. For my training, I want to be aiming for 10. So it keeps my mindset always on the goal of 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. So it's easier for me to always say, like, where do I need to be at? 10. What do I need to be doing today? 10. So it keeps that consistent, which I really like. So these are all personal choices, but I figured I'd share what I like, and maybe you like it too, or maybe you want to make some modifications from it. But those can be my goals. I'm going to read through them again, even though I just said them like 17 times. (laughs) Nutrition. Adhere to my nutritional targets a minimum of 10 out of 14 days for the next six units of 14 days. Training. For the next 12 weeks, aim to achieve 10 points per week. In the gym workouts are three points, something workouts are one point. So both of these goals give me 12 weeks. I like that. Good stuff right there. Now, if we look at the acronym of SMART, the the term specific, that refers to am I aiming for something that is a, like, that coincides with the rest of the acronym, by the way, but it's something specific. For example, when somebody says, well, I want to lose weight, that is non-specific. Because how much weight? I want to lose eight pounds. Okay, boom. That is specific. I want to work out more often. Not specific. I want to work out at least three times a week. That is specific. So for both of these, I, the goals that I stated, they do have the specific component. For nutrition, there's adherence to my nutritional targets. And the nutritional targets are known ranges or known values that for my calories, protein, distribution, sugar, I already know exactly what they should be. So they are specific. You know, calories might be 2,400 to 2,600 calories. Protein might be 200 grams of protein. So I know those numbers. Training, it's specific because I said they should be the in the gym workout or a something workout. In the gym, as I literally went to the gym, the something workout I said was something above my normal daily activity for 10 minutes. So those are specific. They have actual concrete values that you know you did it or you didn't, right? The next letter is M, and that's measurable. Uh, R is the adherence to my nutritional targets measurable. Yes, 
If I'm using a food tracking system, I can track and make sure that I got those numbers, those targets. Is my training measurable? Yes, I, I went to the gym or I didn't go to the gym or I hit the 10 minutes of activity or I didn't. They're very measurable. The A of the SMART is achievable. Are these realistically achievable? Like, can I actually do this? And for me, nutritionally, to hit 10 out of 14 um, days good with nutrition, I wrote, yes, that is realistic given my current prioritization of nutrition. If I was getting ready for a competition, I might try to be 14 out of 14 because I might then move my nutrition to a higher priority and then everything else in my life, you know, has to wait until that competition is over uh, and then I'll deal with it then. Uh, for training, can I get 10 points per week, which would be roughly about three in the gym workouts a week and one something workout, so active four out of seven days? Yeah, that is realistic given my current prioritization of training. So again, those are all achievable uh, goals. Relevant. Hell yeah, they're relevant. <laughs> you know, if I'm eating correctly, that's going to help me lose body fat and build muscle. And if I'm training, that's going to help me build muscle as well. And that actually burns calories. So that helps with fat loss. So yes, they're both relatable. Time bound. Absolutely. I gave myself 12 weeks. So I said the six units of 14 days, that's 12 weeks. And the training we said was 12 weeks. I want to achieve 10 points per week. So 12 weeks. So yes. So these are... Uh, an example of goals that you can use if you're trying to lose body fat and build muscle tissue. Don't rely on just the scale. It's going to be absolutely insane. You're not going to be seeing significant enough differences and they're going to get lost in the day-to-day -day normal deviations of body weight. So adding in goals, SMART goals, related to tracking your habits, not the outcomes, but the habits, is going to be very helpful. Cool. So I thought that was fun to share. Hopefully that gives you some ideas, gives you something to build from. You can give those a try if you want. But if your goal is to lose body fat and build muscle, setting some smart goals, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound goals are going to help you be more successful and help you just have a better mental health throughout the process. Cool. If you have any questions, you have any feedback, anything you want to know, let me know at my email, brutalirongym at gmail.com. If you like today's podcast, please share it. If you like the podcast, please consider donating to support it. You can donate on our website at www.brutalirongym.com. If you like the information we share in our podcast, we do share more and other information on our social media channels. You can find us and please follow us on Instagram and YouTube under the name Brutal Iron Gym. As always, I hope this was helpful. And thank you for listening.